Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine. <laughs> hey, yo! What? Yeah! This is awesome. Oh, my God. Okay, by the way, $100,000. You would be screaming like that, too. $100,000 a week? Don't even. $100,000 a week? You'd be screaming. You'd be like, I hate Ukraine. Zell Disney's a homosexual man. <laughs> oh my God, bro. $100,000 a week, bro. That's crazy. Who came out with a statement about being a pro-Russian propagandist, a paid pro-Russian propagandist. Yeah, it's not just Tim Pool, it's people with tenant media. This indictment alleges that right-wing commentators like Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson, Tim Pool, and Lauren Southern, as a part of the tenant media YouTube channel, have been unwittingly working for a Russian influence operation. Two people described in the tenant indictment as unnamed founders were very aware that their operation was funded by Russians. Tennessee business records list tenants founders is blaze tv's host and tp usa contributor lauren chen aka roaming millennial and her husband now let me tell you something okay i have not tried to any of these people in this indictment but the number one defender of ukraine who kept saying i was a russian dissident or a russian operative has you couldn't have asked them why they were doing pro-russian propaganda and how much money they were getting paid when you were trying to lauren southern or when you were trying to Roman millennial when you were doing buddy buddy conversations with these people destiny what happened this is also it doesn't matter vindication or not it doesn't matter because the people that are so invested in me being a Russian op like a Russian operative not a Russian opposition are so invested in that they will never listen to reason they've already made up their minds they've watched all the YouTube commentary videos from these dumbasses who kept saying like i was pro russia pro russia pro russia from the jump they will still continue with the investment that they've made but i just want to point out seems like who are pro russia got got seems like who are paid propagandists got got a new doj indictment that it alleges that rt employees covertly funded and directed by a u.s company with 10 million in order to push pro russia content the company's based in tennessee there is one media company based in tennessee with the same phrase listed in the indictment the canadian entity that owns tenant media of course is owned by lauren you some tam also known as roaming millennial liam donovan on the board of directors or was it roaming millennial is that what her name was am i saying that right what the f was her name? Lauren Chen. You know, people that uh, Destiny is definitely cozied up to over the last couple of years. It remains to be the truth that Canada is not sending their best. They're either sending their worst or they're sending their best in some instances. But like usually in the realm of politics, Canada is sending their absolute worst. The indictment specifies that two of the people who work for this Tennessee company tenant were deceived, meaning they didn't know that the Russian government was running an influence op. Dave Rubin has 2.4 million subs and Tim Pool has 1.37. So the two people that were deceived, I guess, for a license, Kalashnikov Afa, Afanasieva, founder one and founder two, worked together to mask U.S. company one's source of true funding, RT, by falsely portraying two commentator one and commentator two that U.S. company one was sponsored by a private investor named Eduard Gregorian. In truth and in fact, Gregorian was a fake character benny johnson also almost has 2.4 million but they apparently rounded down from 137 to 1.3 million with temple so i figured ruben's 2.4 million to 2.4 was the same helena shudra shared with us company one a video of a well-known u.s political commentator visiting a grocery store in russia Afa nasieva posted the video in the producer discord channel later that day producer one privately messaged founder two on discord they want me to post this referencing the video that Afa nasieva had posted but it just feels like overt shilling thinks we should put it out there producer one acquiesced responded all right, I'll put it out tomorrow. Now, what I find really funny about this is that, like, why are we not doing this for Israel as well? Because that would, of course, mean literally virtually every top level media commentator would be in the crosshairs in this way. Most of our politicians, too. APAC gets to operate without ever being hit by Farah on a regular basis. What's that about? APAC just spent $20 million to oust two progressive lawmakers, and Israel was caught running a $2 million influence campaign, but you'll never hear Russiagate stenographers utter a peep of protest. Yup, it's true. Isn't that purely because Israel's an American ally and Russia is an American adversary? Is Israel an American ally? Do they seem to be operating like an ally recently? Because it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> I don't know. What you're saying doesn't make sense because then Bob Menendez would be free right now. So would Henry Cuellar. Bob Menendez's crime is that he got payments from egypt another american ally yeah eric adams in trouble for getting payments from turkey some legwork in this thread on identifying the other unnamed and very lightly masked commentators in this incident matt christensen doesn't this guy hate me too i feel like i've seen this guy make videos about me I, I remember watching a video of his look all i'm saying is for all of the uh liberals who are super pro nato who 
spent a whole litany of time talking about how pro Russia I am, even though I fundraised for Ukrainian refugees pretty early on. It seems like all of my enemies who despise me are named in this. So if you have ever found yourself personally aligned with any of those people mentioned, maybe you're not pro-Ukraine and instead simply using a horrifying situation like the invasion of Ukraine to your immediate advantage. Ops taking hard L's again. One hundo P. Tim Pool got 100k per episode and Ruby got $5 million per year. That is crazy money, by the way. Once again, grifting to the left is not a real thing. Grifting to the right, however, very, very profitable. Good money to be made there russians wanted them to post the tucker carlson grocery video but they always thought it was too obviously shilling lauren chen said to post it anyway the russians wanted to blame the isis moscow attack on ukraine they got commentator three to do it if dave rubin is commentator one then i think johnson is three and vice versa to be clear whether or not benny was commentator one or the others neither i nor the indictment are claiming he knew that he was working for the russians the question is whether he should have known or suspected is both philosophical and harder to prove a statement of the leo oh they all have statements coming out Oh, they have statements coming out now. My statement regarding allegations of the leaked DOJ indictment. Should these allegations prove true, I, as well as the other personnel and commentators, were deceived and are victims. I cannot speak for anyone else at the company as to what they do or to what they're instructed. Let me explain something to you guys, by the way. I get asked to do ads in the political realm all the time. All the time, especially during election cycles. Now, they're not paid propagandists for like a foreign government or whatever, obviously, that would require an additional layer of stupidity. But beyond that, why the f are you taking ads from any political operatives whatsoever? Why are you taking ads to be pro a certain political position? Isn't that exactly what you're supposed to be against? It doesn't matter that this is like pro Russia, even if it was like pro gun laws or, or you know, pro guns, you shouldn't be taking that ad at all. The f is wrong with you? You're supposed to be independent media. So I don't do this. Aren't you supposed to have your own independent opinion on subject matters? Why are you taking money from a group, even if they're not pro-Russia, even if it was just a regular homegrown American political group? Why are you taking money from them to say certain things? How should any of your fans ever believe you ever again for the rest of time? Will you be paid for this take? Will you actually be telling your genuine opinion on this take? Do you agree if it was a pro-Ukraine ad? Yeah, even then. What do you mean? Even then, if you're a political commentator, you should not be getting paid by pro-Ukrainian media either. What the Either way, that's why I said if you're a Republican and you're getting paid by like a gun group or whatever, even if you're pro-guns as a Republican, you shouldn't be getting paid by a political group overall. Never at any point did anyone other than I have full editorial control of the show. And the contents of the show are often apolitical. Examples include discussing spirituality, dating, and video games. The show is produced in its entirety by our local team without input from anyone external to the company. TCW is a separate company not associated with TimCast.com or other properties. It exists solely for the production of the Culture War podcast. That being said, we still do not know what is true as these are only allegations. Putin's a scumbag. Russia sucks donkey balls. And to the journalists who wish to jump the gun, create their own narrative or lie about what is currently going on you can eat my irish if you're serially so stupid that you didn't realize the 100k per episode you demanded to spread russian propaganda wasn't coming from russia the dmv needs to revoke your driver's license and you can't be trusted with household appliances like i just saw a guy giving me a hundred thousand dollars to say nice things about pooty poo and i took it like what i think tim pool now that i know his educational attainment like unironically might be that stupid the only funny thing about this is that like paying tim pool a hundred thousand dollars to be pro anything is automatically a waste of resources lest you ever think actual people pay to listen to tim pool 90 percent of all of their revenue literally came from russian shell companies no this is like one aspect of his entire production i think tim gets uh, more multiple revenue streams tim himself gets revenue from his own channels as well so the russian money wasn't 90 percent of tim's revenue i think it was 90 percent of his revenue for the one entity that he created wait what he was got paid 100 grand per week oh my god bro 100 grand per week ukraine is the enemy of this country ukraine <laughs> hey yo what yeah! This is awesome. Oh my God. Okay, by the way, $100,000, you would be screaming like that too. $100,000 a week? Don't even. $100,000 a week? You'd be screaming. You'd be like, I hate Ukraine. Zell Disney's a 
homosexual man. <laughs> oh my God, bro. $100,000 a week, bro. That's crazy. Ukraine is our enemy being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. Bro, this is like mathematically the worst position to arrive at. Like, what do you mean? Like people say I'm a shill for Russia because I'm always like, bro, we need to to a ceasefire america's interest in ukraine are not genuine all they want is the continuation of war so they can like dump all of their older weapons like ultimately we need to come to the table and do a ceasefire like i never once would say ukraine is the enemy of russia that's insane bro they got no autonomy in this i'm sorry the people on the democratic party side that consistently talk about how like well this is what the ukrainians want are literally just straight up lying because if everyone in ukraine said no we don't want to do war what the we need to do a ceasefire immediately we, we hate being slaughtered america would still be like uh okay well you know what if it was okay for a couple more people to get slaughtered you know because we really like the situation right now that we're in currently we love that you guys have you know destroyed half of the russian artillery i mean it wouldn't take much before the cia literally puts a uh, psychopathic like rabid right-wing ultra nationalist in power if ukraine actually changed trajectory i think but again this proves the point that I was making, which is giving Tim Pool money to be pro anything is such an L for whatever your cause is, dude. I love that. Criminal elements of the U.S. government pushing them and guiding them and telling them what to do. Ukraine is now accused a German warrant issued for blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, triggering this conflict. Okay, 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 okay. This is actually really instructive. Why did he say triggering this conflict, bro? They blew up the Nord Stream pipeline after. That's number one. And number two, literally, I think he's reading a script. This is instructive match what he's saying here with my commentary to understand the difference in opinion okay if you want to know what someone who is like pro-russia shill literally getting paid to be pro-russia versus someone who's like yeah nah dog i think it's probably america that blew up Nord Stream pipeline and not mother russia okay because it makes zero sense whatsoever like even when people used to clip the thing that i talked about with like the crimean bridge ukraine blowing up the crimean bridge yes it is still an attack on largely civilian infrastructure and therefore could be considered an act of terror but it's still born out of russia's invasion of ukraine so it's still ultimately in the hands of russia they would of course clip the second part out and say hassan says blowing up the crimean bridge is a an act of terror i would literally compare it to what russia does in terms of like attacking civilian infrastructure which is unjustifiable they would clip that part out to make it seem like i was simply saying that ukraine is doing terror or whatever there's a difference between that my analysis which still lends the blame in the hands directly of the responsible party russia versus this guy being like ukraine is the number one enemy of america ukraine has a valid interest in freeing their borders violator of their sovereignty the most moral and understandable and righteous cause our interest as the united states of america in ukraine not exactly in the same level of infallibility just want to offload our old ass equipment so the goddamn military industrial complex can turn a profit all while not a single american active duty service member is harmed in the process it's a win-win insane to call ukraine your enemy how the are they your enemy they were invaded dog yeah they they were just sitting there looking pretty waiting to be invaded by russia they are the enemy the biggest enemy bro forgot about like all the other things that he could be talking about on a daily basis like china or iran also stupid to say but like ukraine being the biggest enemy is awesome i say right-wing grifting is obviously an incredibly incredibly fortuitous endeavor and this proves it once again was a russian asset before people say hassan you like certain people that used to work for russia today i do abby martin used to work for russia today back in the day russia today was not the russia today it is now it definitely still had those same elements but pre-invasion of ukraine russia today used to do this very interesting thing where on the one hour they would have like someone who is like militantly anti-imperialist the next hour they would have someone who is like insanely right-wing just so you guys understand like their goal was to cause as much chaos and confusion in american politics of course that's the point of their media campaign in general it makes sense america does it all the time what do you think voice of america is having said that there was a time where russia today had like the funniest lineup of commentators where they would have like the anti-imperialism hour with like like abby martin followed up by like are the democrats transing the youth <laughs> dude i love this benny johnson oh my god this come up is 
Fire, dude. By the way, when you see these names, Benny Johnson, Tim Poole, Lauren Chen, Lauren Southern, remember what I always tell you. You can tell a lot by a man and their political opinions by seeing who their enemies are. There have been a litany of supposedly leftist political commentators that have on me for years and years and years. Spent a whole lot of time doing that, as a matter of fact. And I never really responded in kind. What you have to remember is that's because I thought it was unproductive to on those guys because sometimes we're in alignment on certain issues. I spent my time on these guys, okay? Because I think it is really stupid to try to farm a Nazi groped up base of support by on like random trans influencers on Twitter or by on random leftist influencers who also had a lot of smoke for me. You know what I mean? I am not a deeply unserious person who's only invested in the drama. Just remember that. Know beside whom you stand and know who a man presents himself as the enemy of. Great stuff overall. Really cool. Love the story in general. Big fan.